for some more market trends, stocks to watch. David Strzewski is with us, CEO at Sound Planning Group. What's your big picture? How are you feeling about this market right now? Good afternoon. Hey, well, great to be with you, Nicole. You know, I, I'm kind of thinking about this, and I think, you know, what we've known over the last 40 years in our economy with, you know, uh, falling interest rates as we came out of this last inflation cycle and everything down, down, down each year, uh, and then with a really strong uh, middle class, I think a lot of those trends right now are changing, and I think it's very important for people to be aware of it. Why? Because real estate is a lagging indicator. And so we just had some uh, some fresh data out that says that, you know, ultimately that this buying season has been the worst that we've seen in, in more than a decade. Uh, why? Ultimately, affordability is at its worst place than it's ever been. And so that's a terrible idea for the uh, uh, for the average family out here uh, as, as we've gone from, you know, 3% mortgages now to 7% mortgages. And people are just, you know, not motivated to get out and sell right now. And so with this uh, lower volume, uh, we have seen uh, the, these new homes come out. And, and what a lot of people are puzzled by is, well, hey, why is the price of the average house going up? And the, the reason for this is that we're buying brand new homes. And so if we're buying a brand new house, guess what? It's going to cost a little bit more than an older house that you just picked up from somebody else. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out here today uh, that uh, are, are looking. I just don't think that they're going to be making moves until we probably get below, below like 5% uh, on our mortgages uh, for, for people to really uh, get out there and, and be motivated enough to buy and sell. Yeah, I mean, look, the price is still, home prices are still at fresh record highs. To your point, a lot of new homes have been the supply, but they have the ability to um, work with you on the mortgage rate, right, the home builders, and that's right. one of the reasons people like going there. That being said, um, what do you tell folks who want to make some money in the market? Um, we've seen some rotation. What are you more geared towards these days? Okay, well, a couple of things that I'll just note here is, is that, you know, the world is changing. I think a lot of the data, uh, if we're paying attention and not just looking at headline numbers, but we're kind of diving into the details, we see an erosion taking place right now. And I don't think that we're quite as strong as we think that we are. Although, you know, hey, we get a bunch of liquidity in the market, it, it still could go up. Uh, so I, I think a lot of people are taking a, a play uh, right out of uh, Warren Buffett's book here today, and they're, they're raising some cash. Uh, and the reason why we know this is because we're, we're seeing volume spike uh, right now in a lot of tech selling. And so, you know, we're just taking profits uh, and, and, and this is normal. This is healthy. Um, I expect, you know, like a 5, 10 percent pullback. And then what's probably going to be off to the races here, given the fact that we're in a presidential election year, et cetera, et cetera. So where should people go to uh, to allocate? Well, I think that, uh, that, that there's a lot of rotation that's coming out of you know, big tech, which is amazing. And I do still think it can run, especially some of the names out there. But I think that we're rotating into things like oil uh, that we recognize is, is becoming more expensive. We know that this is important. We see some of the uh, dynamics changing right now with the BRICS nations and, 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 and the fact that we're having to, you know, uh, uh, you know go around uh, South America now. We can't just use these, these normal canals. It's, it's just more expensive to get this stuff. Um, I'm looking at uh, metals and metal miners very specifically. Um, I want to point out uh, something, and that is, of course, gold is the ultimate hedge uh, as it relates to uh, uncertainty. A lot of people are looking at the world right now, and I think it's true, uh, whether inflation's up or down, whether uh, we, we, we have positive stock markets or negative stock markets, there's a number of factors that we can lay out. I think in pretty much every uh, scenario, I can point to gold as being one of the biggest winners out of this. And when I talk about gold, uh, I, I really want to mention silver. Why? Because everything's sitting here at its all-time highs right now, including gold. Do you know that silver is 40% uh, below its all-time high of $50? It's sitting at about 30 right now. And so I believe that this is a gift. So there's a number of ways to play this gold-silver rally. I think miners are probably one of the better ways because who knows when, you know, significant vertical spikes come. Uh, but, uh, but ultimately, uh, I got a couple of picks here for you, uh, and, uh, and they are uh, Rio Tinto, uh, which is a uh, the yeah. second largest mining company. And uh, so, you know, you want to talk about some of the big guys, why they've got buying power. And uh, and so there's acquisitions that are strategically being made right now as as as, as new uh, demand is coming in. We've also got this higher base price, so uh, it's more profitable. Uh, but this particular organization is doing like 54 billion a year. They've got great market exposure worldwide. They've got lithium involved, iron ore. Um, I think that this should be a part of anyone's uh, that's serious in a, in a diversified portfolio. Uh, but I'm looking at individual names here. 
And then another one is Alamos Gold. You know, if I'm talking about uh, some of the uh, the names in here that I think have a really strong uh, potential on the upside, uh, we've got about 30 hedge funds right now that are are, are, are looking at this and, and invested pretty significantly. They've made a significant acquisition here this this year uh, that has resulted in uh, you know big big upside. And of course, you know when when you got the price going up, they're a lot more profitable right now. Uh, they're looking at uh, you know another 15, 16 percent on the year. And the previous name I just gave you is looking at about 25 percent. So we think that uh, that these are real uh, ideas. My my whole point here is get some exposure. Um, I, I don't know yeah. what, what people want to do. And if they don't want to do individual names, maybe go to GDX or GDXJ. Yeah. You know, the big miners are just the small miners. Uh, but this is the time to get allocated today while uh, they are not being uh, valued, I think, uh, in a way that is that is truly, um, you know, significant uh, here as, as, we, as the world turns. Yeah, and we were just talking about uh, rates in the last segment, and that's something you're watching pertaining to housing overall, the inversion mm -hmm. of the yield curve, which has been uh, flattening some, right? So, David, tell me more about the rate environment and what that means for investors. Why does it matter? All right. Well, everyone's looking for rate cuts. Uh, we have uh, rallied, I think, five, six times now on this, you know, rate cuts are coming. Um, I think that they actually are now, and that's going to be really bullish uh, for the market, at least for the short term. Although if we actually look at data, every time that the Fed kind of changes direction and we're at the one year mark here, July 26th tomorrow, uh, since they stopped uh, you know, raising rates, uh, when we see those pivots come, recessions follow uh, pretty quickly afterwards. So I wouldn't get ahead of my skis here uh, on all this, but I, I think that... Uh, you know, as we're looking at, uh, at where the world is, uh, there are a lot of companies here today, uh, in, in, in specifically the Russell, that need lower rates like immediately. Why? Because they're having to borrow at a time right now that things are just much more expensive. And then now their prices to borrow have, have significantly increased. Liquidity is, is changing right now. And so if you are certain types of businesses or for certain types of projects, it's hard to get capital today. And that is a big uh, a challenge because if you don't got the cash right now because you're too small, um, you know, and you're not one of the big guys sitting on and all of it, uh, you're just you don't got enough fuel to really grow in a way that uh, I think is meaningful. And so I think that the rates are going to cut. I think that uh, the average consumer is uh, is, is, is going to see some some mortgage declines, at least for the short term. Uh, that is until I believe that we have uh, more Treasury issuance when, when when the issue comes and the challenge comes. And uh, my base case here is uh, is unfortunately that I think the U.S. Treasury uh, is going to be seen as uh, less valuable in the future and potentially loses its world reserve asset status because of the excessive printing and spending and the high likelihood that Moody's is going to come in here and say deficit spending's too high, uh, you know, debt to GDP, we're slowing down, um, things are not as clear as, as, as they were before. And so maybe that third rating agency downgrades us and we find ourselves in a, a difficult spot. But, you know, the U.S. is still the strongest uh, uh, place to be right now. So I'll put on the dirty, dirtiest shirt or the cleanest shirt and the dirty laundry, I guess, and uh, just say that uh, the U.S. is still a good place to be. Uh, but, uh, but we still have some issues. Uh, let's allocate to some safer places. David Shostevsky, thank you, of Sound Planning Group. Great to see you, David. Thanks.